your argument, didn't it? Hey. Okay, so have a seat. Hey. So the problems that we saw in the comments, like, you know, we're talking about overpowering the base, meaning his power went beyond the little amount of battle because once the foot was on the ground, or power was too strong for the stance of the foot. Do you agree? Hey. And then the stance is too narrow. How can you fix that? Ladies. How would you fix that? Mining yourself? No, the answer that's fine. Just come up with something. Are you just asking how we would fix it? Oh, my goodness. What would you tell them to do? So, do you guys have, does anybody have any idea where I'm getting to? I don't know if he's doing a normal come in and then step out. Yeah. yeah. Talk about that. Well, with the, you know, as I learned under you, it's the natural body movement. So, like, when you're turning, and I know I'll do it wrong or whatever, but, like, um, so if I was going to go this way, it's like you kind of come in, but you have to step out. It's doing the natural movement of what your body's going to do. And I was, you're yeah. always telling me to fix it. So. What about you?
body's lining up with the placement of your foot, but when you come to here, I'm already, no way I can step straight ahead without artificially moving my body. So I would look there first. Okay. And you'll probably find that his punch, his shoulders are advanced and punch. So, you know, like for me, for me anyways, okay. it's look at symptom is one thing. Are you fixing the symptom or are you fixing the problem? So the problem may not be the symptom that you see, it may be something else. So if he's lining into too narrow a stance, what is the movement that's causing the too narrow of a stance? What is the movement that's causing the double step? For most people, it's because the weight is a wrong placed on his foot. Meaning that you're back here like this and you have to move and put your weight on that foot. And then that creates a fall on the floor. Okay? If you take the idea that the end of the front stance is the beginning of the next movement to the next stance, you will not rise your body. But if you put your foot back here and you push with your toes, you will rise your body. Okay? So, the first thing you got to do is set your direction. If your direction is set, how are you going to go there? So then he set his direction correctly on his steps. Do you teach beginners to do it as a load of bend, step punch, or do you combine the load of bend with the step punch? And will that produce a different result in how the student learns? These are the things you need to consider when teaching the like you show up. It's a very basic product. Okay? But within that product, a lot of things can go wrong. And if your students are doing something, is it because you're not utilizing, you're not teaching the correct training methods and the correct understanding of how they move form? Which is what I propose. It's my proposition. I've been saying that for years. Okay, you guys have never listened to me speak. Now, you may or may not agree with me. That's okay. But I thought, but you, know, you set your direction and you go. Okay? Because your toe hits first on some of your steps, then you do that punch. You see, your power is already over your body because you already turned your body. It's already over here. And now, now this power wants to go somewhere, but it's held back. So, maybe you do this. <clears throat> Jesus does that. Because this embraces the power and allows you to hold balance and gives you a three-point stance. You could argue that this is basically a two-point stance. This creates a three-point stance with more stability because a triangle, you know, a, tri a tripod is, is designed for a certain form of stability. Different stability than a, 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 a four-foot uh, four table. Four-foot table. So you should be studying that product in that sense and figuring out, you know, what is it that I need to change in my teaching skills because that shouldn't happen. So he's either not listening to me or I'm teaching him wrong. That would be the first thing that would go through my head. And so, but basically the pattern that he did is the pattern that everybody does in the show showed up. So I don't want to dwell on, on those issues. We've talked about them before more in depth. So, if you guys don't mind, you can sit down. Notice how they don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bill, not you, the only one. Yeah, you come on up. Chris, come on up. You might as well come on up too. So we have a hand cut. Like I said, this is going to go fast because my main thing is to bring back to you guys what kind of we've done in the Comic Con over the years. This is nowhere near all the forms that we do, but it's a good selection of cut. Okay, so uh, either one of you guys can find somebody to demonstrate the hand cut.
and the Shota Kanye kind of oftentimes you know, one stance is like this. Today, it's not like this. But you go to South America, it's like this. So it depends on where you go. Because it's changed. You go to Europe, it's different. All right, hand knee up. Because again, we can't take too much time on every single one. Who's going to demonstrate hand knee up? Harry did hand on Shota, so. Get up. How do we do 
do it? How do we learn it with coursework? Is it, is it, uh, sometimes, sometimes at one point we did it, it's a knee up. Other times we did it, it's a straight press and kick. No, see, but you're doing the kick and pivoting the kick in. Right. So, so the action would be that you keep the hips line here and then turn the hips. Because this would be a, a kick, a stomp kick, which is considered as a stomp kick. So as a stomp kick, you don't really pivot to here, it's not here. You're going to pivot from here and drive in. So if you're going to step in and throw the guy, like I did off that roundhouse kick, okay? Um, you know, I like punch here off balance and then here. You have that kind of idea. In the AKA, the knee comes up, foot facing out, and it's a stomp. Oh, oh. And even with the kick, it shouldn't turn all the way through and then down. The kick should be when the hips are square. Then the step is facing down. One, two. Foot doesn't move in preparation for the action. The fans of the point of the parallel is above, cut to the end, the action of moving here to the end. Asanda and Gora, and the actions were going to be moving the action from this way and down. So we would be circling the action this way, everything is this way and then down. We would be using, as I did, or with a straight cross case, whatever it is. Go down, have your hips this way, one, two, and come out before you. Know, so that whatever it is. By the way, if you stop your feet hard like he's doing, make sure you got the right surface. Yeah. Now we used to do that on the wooden floor and didn't hurt at the end, but I Right on the concrete. Who's doing it on top of the concrete? The point yeah. I'm getting at is that, you know, don't go right. to the point to make it stop like that as hard as you can on the wrong surface. You're just going to screw your joint up with your leg. Okay, AR4. <laughs> hey, I'm young Don.
and then you just stepped out and did it. I thought I, I played with it more as a flow, so once I come from here, bang, and I'm up, this becomes almost a slap away, and I drive right through the entire thing and blank. So that aspect of the form, I think, is slightly different from teaching the tree hunts because it was never really described. And, you know, uh, back when we learned it prior to Anderson, there was nobody giving any clear cut directions on the map in this in this area. Okay, thank you. Now some people volunteered to do take the show. Now who the people volunteered to do take the show? Come on, there were three of you. Get out of here. Three people volunteered to do take the show. Take the show. You want to do chogi? I'm looking for a chogi and take the boat. How about chogi? How about who wants to do night fight? Who would like to do a hanchi? This kind of has a lot of names. And there are differences. Come on, there was more than just Chris up here. Let's go. Well, so they wanted to do this. Face the crowd. And out of curiosity, let's have both of the kind. White hot. Well, we never changed the format of Boston Show, Paul said so. We just called it a different name. 
Plus, I die, I would change a little bit. Okay, but uh, Chris, do you mind coming down again? Right. Okay, and do the beginning of hand on the other one.
Okay? Give everybody a look at it. That's basically that copy. Again, we're not going to get into a lot of differences. Can I ask one question? Yeah. I have a feeling with these uh, three punches coming back this way. This, this way. We never did it that way. No. Okay. That's all I can tell you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you to or wrong. Okay, but we never did it that way. Boss I die. Boss I die. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say that! Kick and then down throwing Uchimata as well. 
There's a throw right in that. Okay, G.I.
Anybody get a handle on all three of those? Is that how most people would expect the format of concubine feasting? Anything glaringly missing? Anything? Anybody knows? You said that. I think I uh, mixed Kusu Moon and Kapunai together. Because I noticed I moved. I remember one moved up and the other one moved back on my side. I can't get into it. All right, we'll hold that box. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. In the beginning, I think so. Anything else that anybody saw that was different? No. Yeah, that versus what? You have this versus this. Okay. Are you doing copy die? You can ask what version of copy die you're doing. Okay. So, um, it's good. And I'm going to use my back stance, not the Korean back. I'll maybe, uh, but. Definitely rotating here without this movement. Stepping up to this angle. On this angle, thrust kick. That is different. Even though they did all the same movements, they did them in different. They, they all pulled back. Okay? So contra nine, your hands are here. One, two, and you're up. Boom, bam, bam. Okay, then you pull back and kick. So there's, you get the height differences mm -hmm. in that part of the form. Right? Um, in one part of the form, you're kicking one, two, three, four. Kick. One, two, three, four. That's the, I don't do it that way anymore, but that is, is something that you would see. Some of us had to before you go down, not after you go down. But I don't think they changed the form. <laughs> that, I was, think that was actually Kwanku, and Kwanku Dai made the shift. I don't so yeah, we had Kwanku Dai, we had Kwanku Dai, we had Kwanku Dai, to be exact, yes. Yeah. Um, and, and so some of those things were shifted, you know, in that kata, in that fashion. So the kicking in block, punch, block, punch, punch. And then using back stances on those side punches instead of front stances. That was something that came later. That was probably more true to something happened in the dojo, not something that was done before. The Kanku Dai from the old Kuko days, the side kicks are not pulling up. The first kick is half step, draw in so you're kicking directly to the side. When you draw up this way, the kick has to pull back on an angle. And the purpose of this, because the person is in the center. If you draw it here, the has to go in this direction because that's the center. So this was drawn one, two, kick. The final kick uh, is from here, draw back. There's no pulling up, there's no double step. It's a specific draw in and back. That was the old Rupo West. You didn't do it that way, you were just off. Back up a little bit on hand on the Eon. You had the people who pulled back the kick, you had the people who stepped forward the yep. kick, and at one time you were doing a half half, mm -hmm. then one day Samson changed it. Okay, so you have some different things, but they don't change the format of the kata, I don't think. They can change maybe your interpretation or your, what your look see is on it. Yes, but not by a lot. After the uh, side kick of that, um, I stepped bring my foot down, not falling back, and then set forward with my left. And that's something I remember from being down in Mr. Anderson's place and him saying either one is accepted. So for me, it helped me get to the uh, finish where I wanted to finish. So that, and I, I don't know if it's that considered acceptable or I wouldn't well, have any trouble with it. It's not how I do it, but I wouldn't have any trouble with it. That's what you know you do, and you have a reason for it, which is basically you know when you your knees. Well, change the boot cup, yeah. It's really cool. It also affects the load, the load on your knees. So if you kick here and then go back, okay. And so what you had to do was after you did the kick, and you came back, you had to hold that to the last instant. 
so that this became fault and then moved. And that changes the load on your body, too. So I think that that also may have to do with the load on the body for some people. Mr. Anderson also changed it specifically in the uh, hand on meat on, and it's in one of the one of the tapes when he was teaching down at uh, Humble Goats on Saturday. And in hand on meat on, he said he kicked and he stepped out this way because he didn't like the idea of blasting somebody and then stepping back on the person who was behind him. So that was his rationale for it. kick and stepping out. And any questions on that? So that kind of has a quite a few variations that have come up over the years. But I, I think it, essentially they all stay with pretty much the same basic concept. There is a side kick, which is how you get into it. Okay. All right. Um, <coughs> that being for young people. Somebody else volunteered for MP, I don't know who it was. Who was it? Yeah, I didn't write down who's doing what, so I said to remind you guys to learn. Oh, you're not going to the cup. Because you lock the back leg, you tend to can't move it forward. You go look at the 
see down those pictures, you'll see some of them where he's in a perfect stance and some of them where he's candid. You can't move him down the left, or is that the way it went? Well, either, your leg is off. Pardon? You can't move your hips laterally sideways if your legs are locked, leg is locked on. But the other, the other point that's made is the back leg should be straight, not locked, which means there's a natural bend to the knee, which pulls the hara up underneath. But this artificial pushing down and bending the knee is not part of it, and it's not, it, it won't support anything. It's still forward pressure, it's creating forward pressure. That's what I want to argue. We're arguing about the difference between this and that. That's about it. Okay, one other thing that he didn't do. Okay. Is this is one, two, three. And it's a pop like that. And that's uh, how we do it. Where the Shotokan jump back, bring your feet up, yeah, like Ron did. Okay. So you do have some of those distinctions in the cut. And that's a distinctive one because it stands out. How do you do that? So that one's a little harder to do. Okay, it's much easier to do when you're younger. One of the other things we saw there. We were talking earlier today about jumping or not being able to jump and how not to have to jump and still stay with the kind of last one. So, some of us just get beyond the point of jumping. Right. Okay. Well, right, so let's do it. He taught so he didn't jump. He, he taught Onsu uh, Kanazawa had a magnificent jump. Um, the Kami wasn't jumping. And the Shuru, uh, as they do in Shu, which is another pronunciation of Onsu, they have no jump. They step through. But the, inter the interpretation is still the same. Sochin. Sochin. You're a young Sochin by your own small circles. Who else knows? We've got behind you. And you. Both of you guys can come on out. Who else volunteered? Do you want your Sochin? Okay. I don't see 
thing I probably love because this is always very conducive to what we did. And it actually says about the honey side trees. You side kick one way, this becomes what you have to have to do to create the movement. You side kick a different way, and it's really how you work and track and move out, then you're not going to pivot as far. So if you're pivoting from here, you're probably going to stop it there. If you're pivoting from here, you're probably still doing a 90 degree turn of the shoulders. And then we'll put the technique in a different place. Okay, um, all three of you guys get out here in a second. Hey! And face everybody into a social dodge. With Stacey said, social dodge. Okay, good. Do we have different social dodge? Yes. Yeah. Why are you doing a social dodge with your turn? How's your weight? Uh, pushes more towards the front leg, but it's essentially center. Essentially center. Yeah. How about you? About the same. I think it is. Straight your back. I can tell mm -hmm. there. Right. And Jeff Ellis says his weight more forward. No different forward. You know, you can argue all day on what the social stance is. Okay. Because you know. I, I'm more in favor of more of a middle weight. Centering the social dodge. Centering. Or some people feel it should be forward. So you get both. But I don't think for, for our purposes, the format, the kata, okay, uh, I think it's fine. So I think so chin, so chin stance is not as dogmatically ruled as in Kutsudachi, Kokutsudachi, Kibirachi, because the Sochin stance is an advanced stance. So by that time, we just do things the way you do it. All right, Bunsu. Bunsu. Would you get up there? Sure. How many of you guys have Bunsu? Different 
jumping, isn't it? Jumping. Right. Right. Changes the dynamics by having the hip turn. Yeah. Pardon? Changes the that dynamics by having the hip turn one way or another. Well, I can tell you what, when, when you start that jump, okay, so you start here, you turn here, you just cut down off the distance, you have to jump. Alright? How did you learn the first one? We were both leaving. I'm putting on the spot because we, we trained this jump a couple different ways. Okay? You remember you bring both these up? And then you spin and then you and then go out. I don't care what stage you start from. Just bring both these up. That's a different jump yet. That jump, if he puts too much power into it, he goes across the jump. It doesn't need as much energy for the jump. The other thing that's missing on that jump is there's supposed to be a back kick on the not. They don't always back kick anyone. They, they don't always back kick anyone. Well, they don't. They took it out. But the back kick is supposed to be yeah, inside yeah. of that. For us, we should ideally do a back kick. I was doing a back kick. Later. But, Alright, look back here. Go. You gotta get up here. The problem is getting back in the right direction. So, yeah, we've been experimenting with all that in the cut. But you know, if you look at what they did with the form, they simplified it. It's just that, that jump has been simplified over the years. Mr. Hickey, if you recall when you and I used to do this form for the jump, you came out of the back stance. And I took a Sochin Dati but loader off the front leg. Because when jump came off this leg, you would be here, you would shift your weight to the front leg because it came off the front leg. I would already have my front leg loaded. So that has a lot to do with the comfort of your jump as to which leg you're going to load up. It also takes a lot more time to go from here to here and jump. So that becomes a personal preference. But we learned it out of a key bench. I did. So when I first did it, I was doing it from a Kiva Dutch. Yeah, and yeah then, you did. So this, I, I adapted this because everybody wanted me to do that, so I figured this is going to be a little harder. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, that, that's, I mean, that's your naive third degree black belt thinking, I'll do it that way. It's not as easy as the other way, but it's harder, you know, it's harder. It's not, it's easier than this way, but it's not as easy as that way. So. Whether that made any sense or not, or had any real value to it, I'm not going to think about it. And I modified it from a horse stance into a modified flipping back. But if you start here, okay, here, and you swing out and down, you can you know, so pretty much make it work. Even what do you do with these years by doing that? But what I'm trying to show you is that regardless of your age, you can change the jump. See? Or now. And so I can still have the jump in form. Okay? And you pass it to do it, even as you age. You've got to watch your knees on the landing. So, all right, how much time do we have left? Huh? 20 minutes. Ninja Shiho! Come on. Who else? Ninja Shiho. Somebody else. I was going to say, somebody else had to be for that. Somebody else? Ninja Shiho! Ninja Shiho! Shiho!
How about that? What was interesting is while they didn't stay together, they ended within less than a second of each other because of timing differences. They all spent about the same amount of time in the form. And we've kind of seen that as a pattern, except for uh, Sochin. Sochin uh, uh, just always slowed down more movements and things like that. But for the most part, it's interesting to see these different rhythms and then come out because I didn't, wouldn't, you know, if you were to ask me before they did it, I would probably know the other thing would happen. But it didn't. I don't know whether you guys are just adjusting to each other or not. But you get the feeling of the form. So what I'm hoping that we get from this is that you guys think, yeah, there's a product here that I saw that I would like to do. Okay? Because we need people doing these cottage to keep them alive within the quantum time. Right? Some of us are getting aging. I'll do the jump in Unsu like I did there. But I don't want to do the fall down and roundhouse kick thing. Because <laughs> that's harder on my body than the silly jump is, frankly. So when I do it with those guys, I said, just leave the two movements out completely. Okay? And I suppose if I had the right time, right place, I'd probably do it and pay for it tomorrow, but I'm not interested in doing that. <laughs> so, did everybody see a form? Not the performance. Did anybody see a form that they would like to learn? A form that you don't do that you would like to learn. Who saw a form that they don't do that they would like to learn? Or a form that they kind of know they like to learn better? So that's what I would like to see happen. That's the purpose of all this. Okay? Is to kind of see where everybody's at on the kata. We haven't all drifted that much. And they have us come back and say, there is this body of knowledge that we have that we, I think we should protect. And to hopefully excite you guys a little bit to say that that form has draws me. You know, and then take the time to learn it, develop it. Even if it's not a rank requirement, so what? You've got plenty of time. You know, whatever your lifetime is, that's what you have. Who's going to do the engine? Chrissy's still here? Where's she going? I'm here, but I'm just learning it. I know. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I've been able to put her on the spot and tell her she has to do it for once. Okay. Sanchin! Sanchin. Pardon? I believe it's a good 
it, it matches up to some of our peripheral Anybody else have an opinion on that? Because if you'd done that two minutes ago, you'd have been out here. I was trying to remember. It's one of my favorites. So why is it one of your favorites? This is, not a, this is not a traditional comic con kind of. It's very dynamic. There's lots of kinds of things on your breathing in order to get the, the rhythm of the It brings some elements that we don't have other places. Yes, it does do that. Okay. okay. No kicks, yeah, that could be a plus. Uh, no since, I, that since I couldn't observe her car, are you teaching Sayuchin or CM? CM. Okay. She didn't hit the ankles. Because I remember one point you were teaching Sayuchin. Sayuchin was in charge. Yeah. And that was way back when, before we did CM. <laughs> okay, some of us had memorized Sayuchin, so we did it, and then once the CM did it, Sayuchin was out the door. So, you know, I mean, it does use Shiko Dodge, but it, you know, it does use your Sanji Dodge. And it uses, you know, some of us, it, it, we were, it's easy to be adapted because we did the Sanji Dodge and the San Shin, the San Shin Kata. <coughs> and I think, even though it's outside of the system, the, the, it has enough elements that are very, very similar that it can be very easily done by our practitioners. There are other Shiko Kata that just don't fit, but this one does. There's a couple others that do too. So I think, in my opinion, this is a good cut. And, you know, it's got very, you know, a lot of contrast, the slow breathing, the quick action, so you've got a lot of that within that, which I think is a challenge and can be, you know, enjoyable to do. So there are probably, there are other cut out there, too, that could be done. But I selected this one because it's, I think it's the one that fits the best. Some of them are even shorter than that, but I think this one fits the best. And we used to do this, and we thought guys could do it in competition. And with the right training, we can copy the keyhole because it wasn't that much different. The keyhole for that kind of it's not that much different than the show, where some of the keyhole and the sheet of is different. This kind of doesn't exhibit that type of action. Now, did you notice anybody free step anything? Did you notice anybody trying not to pre step something? You pre step on one leg, which is your bad ankle. There's one side of your body you pre step on, the other side you don't. It might be the left angle, I don't know. But pre stepping never cut your score in cut. No. Which is the point I'm getting to. But well, he, did, he didn't do it on every movement, but there's one side you favor a little bit, then he tended to do a little bit of pre step on it, and then it would look like you're trying not to do it the next time. So, um, and I do think it was associated with the same foot. I'd have to see you do it again to be, be sure. But the point I'm getting at is, is it doesn't affect the kata, it actually helps with movement. So the some of the time in this kata, if you don't pre-step it, it's very difficult to do the movement with the certain pivots. So it's not outside the framework of the form. And this is a very good kata to, to kind of express that. And if you notice, on both practitioners, moving forward, moving back especially, the leg would precede the step. In other words, the leg would precede, then, stands with the form. And some of you guys try to, uh, like you go to back stance, you see? So I swing back and then move, and what are you missing? Where do I try to do it at the same time? You know, you can experiment with those patterns. All right? Your Shihan may have a preference, and that's obviously what you should do, but you should, you know, get a feel for what is best for your body. So if you want to argue that, you should argue what's best for your body with the Shiha. What were you going to say? I was going to ask you, um, you can name other forms. If you can name other forms from other styles that might be consistent with the Kwan crowd. Well, we're running out of time. We did not skip our Kaku, but you have Kaku and you have Anmach. Um, Amak is ours, Amakaku is somebody else's, and then you have Chinto. Okay? And, you know, so some people like to do close to the water reverse of Chinto because they probably like the form. How about Seipai? 
Say phi is sine phi. So, you know, when you look at it, what did we do? We did the H, what were the time, the H J kata. Okay, and that would include those, those forms. And then that would include the, the, the style of those forms also. Okay, so that's just what we, you know, so we did. We explored those because we were cross-training referees. And so, you know, we're there, you know, two to three hours a night, two to three, you know, three to four days a week, probably, plus, or if we're there two nights, we're still there on Saturday forever. And so we had to try to do this stuff, so we did a lot of this. But I hope, what I'd like to do is encourage everybody to think about how you can enhance the Comic-Con by being one of the resources for a particular kata. And then make that a study. For a minimum of three years. Do it every day. Because then you inculcate the movement. Inculcate the movement just means it becomes autonomous. And then it becomes autonomous and you take the movements and you do the next step which you're supposed to do and work, and work out a Bunkai the movements. Doesn't have to follow the pattern. Just because the cutter moves straight ahead doesn't mean the Bunkai moves straight ahead. You know, if you start to loosen up that a little bit, then you make the cutter work. So you not only work your system, you work your cutter. Okay? Which is working the cutter probably more difficult than working your system in some respects, but the two should be should be hand in hand. I think in the in the best of all situations. Does anybody know what time it is? Uh, it's four fifty-five. Pardon? Four fifty-five. Four fifty-five. Who haven't we heard from? Would anybody like to demonstrate a cut? We've got time for somebody to demonstrate one move. We've got time not to talk about it, but would anybody like to uh, show us on Hawks if that's on the list? I just can't tell that on. Gon Kaku then. Gon Kaku or Gon Kuku? Gon Kuku. Weird ways to pronounce it. Anybody want to do it? Nobody volunteers that car? You don't know. I'll get chin to you. Go ahead. Chin mm -hmm. to